So my name is Christine White, and I work for ESRI, ESRI, in Redlands, California. And I am the product manager for the ArcGIS editor for OpenStreetMap, and I did a workshop yesterday. But um, we're not talking about that today. We're going to talk about this topic, um, building worldwide multi-source maps. And I bet uh, many of you have kind of thought about this, and that's why you're here, to talk about to hear about some of the challenges, some of the things we've learned, and I'm excited to present the results from our assessment. So first, multi-source maps. Uh, when I think of multi-source maps, the reason you would make a multi-source map might be to get the best data from the best sources. So, for example, we have a map here of the San Diego area, and it's got waterways, and it's got buildings, and it's got streets, and uh, place names, places of interest, and you can imagine that these are scale appropriate. So clearly when we're zoomed out uh, to a larger view, you're going to see different layers than when you're zoomed in really close. For example, the place of interest are going to be when you're zoomed in closer. So it's very rare, of course, that you have um, one data provider for all this different information. If you're going to create a map with a lot of different information in it, likely you're getting your data from multiple sources. So for example, here we have a zoomed out uh, view of the US, and this comes from our ArcGIS.com base maps that we produce. Uh, and you can see the sources are in the lower uh, right-hand corner there. And we see the sources are the National Hydro Hydrologic Data Set, um, some source from Esri, DeLorme, the Food and Agriculture Organization, USGS, EPA, NOAA. Those are sources that were used to make this map. And can you all still hear me in the back? This OK. And when you zoom in, uh, we have the, we can see that there's different sources here because we're zoomed in closer. We see now we have the County of Napa, again, NHD. Uh, and then we also have the Sacramento Association, uh, Count, Council of Governments, um, EPA, USDA, Delorme, Intermap, Navtech, et cetera. So we have different sources now that we're zoomed in. So, you know, this, it seems like a simple thing, but each of these sources probably has different rules on how you can use their data and licensing rules, and there's technical challenges as well. So these are maps that ESRI serves out through its community-based maps program. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that just for background context. Um, first off, we have this system called ArcGIS Online. And it's a source where folks can go and get um, base maps to use for free. They can discover content. Uh, you can register and use some of the ArcGIS.com tools as a subscription service if you want to do geocoding or do some kind of processing or have ArcGIS.com host your data. But it is also a repository for free data and maps that we produce that are pretty nice. And the Esri Community Maps program is a partnership program where Esri works with um, partners all over the world from various levels. It can be as a national government, it can be a state government, it can be regional, it can be a city or county. And we partner with them to host their data. And so we have the world of user content over here. And then we have Esri content, which uh, is often content that we get through our commercial data partnerships. And then in the middle, we have this overlap where we have these community maps that are um, based largely on contributor content, and where we don't have content from a contributor, we can supplement it with commercial data. So that's the Esri Community Maps program. We are building what we hope are very useful maps, and our uh, user base is telling us that they're useful, and when they're not, we can uh, encourage them to, to let us have their data and host it so it can be useful for them. Uh, it's online content hosted by it's available to anyone who goes to ArcGIS.com. And our plan, our goal, is really to assemble the best available data from the GIS community so that they and others can benefit from this repository uh, of excellent data. And we're also compiling a geodatabase of this data that we're hoping in the future uh, we can make some of that available for folks to use and leverage and participate with as well. Uh, so here is a map that shows our community maps prog uh, program partners right now. And you can see that they are very geographically disparate with a lot of emphasis in the uh, Western Hemisphere. But there's a lot of places where we don't have partners. And as I mentioned earlier, where we don't have partners, we 
will often supplement that with commercial data that Esri purchases. Uh, what happens when our partners give us data, we put it into, through an ETL process, into uh, what we call our local government uh, information model. It's pretty much saying, you know, there's certain layers that local governments need to manage to do their emergency, to do their city planning, and we provide uh, tools that allow our partners to put their data into this paradigm, and then we can easily suck it into our world topographic map. This is just a screenshot of the template that you can get. You can download this. This is freely available if you're curious more about this model. And these are the layers that we're interested in for the world topographic map that the Community Maps program serves out. And it's, OK, good, the shading shows up. So uh, there's some basic layers that we, we really want to get just for basic rendering. Um, and then there's these shaded areas that appear more when we zoom into the map. And so these are. Uh, not, we say they're optional, but they're high.